1952, I was a member of the Ghost Riders, and we had a club car that we chopped it and channeled it, and it was an A-Alter. Now, the big difference was it had a carbureted flathead in it, and so, you know, it ran, I think, 102, 103. Uh, and so, yes, I had driven an Alter, but nothing like the Rat Trap. Right. So yeah. how did you get to drive uh, Don Green's Rat Trap? About the same way I did a lot of the cars that came out there. His driver didn't show up one day and, you know, I had my fire suit and it's like, all I know is, is that Green came over and says, Hibbler, you want to take a run in the trap? And I said, oh, sure. You know, I mean, hey, this is going to be fun. I know the first run in the car was over 200, which, wow. again, this is breaking all the rules because you're supposed to make a half pass, shut it off. But since it was my rules, I could do what I wanted, and I did. You know, here's a short wheelbase uh, blown fueler, yep. and I jumped in that thing, and it was, it was just unreal. Interestingly enough, uh, I asked Willie Boris, you know, it's like, okay, Willie, if I'm going to drive this thing, what do you do? And his comment basically was, if it's between the guardrails and the tires are still smoking, don't lift. He didn't say anything about what direction you're supposed to be pointing, which that everybody knows that he went through the lights in a lot of different directions. But you know, it, it was amazing that the car itself, um, while it did get squirrely, it did straighten itself out. If you stayed in it. If you stayed in it. If you lifted, you were going to go for a, all kinds of ride. Now what made that car fast? I've heard some, uh, some stories about little exotic fuels and things well, like that? it was a combination. They, uh, a little hydrazine, or a lot of hydrazine, depending on how late in the day it was. <laughs> now, how did it uh, get to be more? Well, with, you gotta go back to when everybody was running in the, at that time, you know, you didn't throw your nitro away after each run. You, uh, you mixed it up. And you you remixed just, it. You just <laughs> topped it off with the next batch and you kept going and going. Well, the same thing added uh, with, with hydrazine. You know, if you added 5% each run, well, you're just going to top it off, but you're going to start with maybe a, two gallons of nitro, so you throw in another 5%, and then you top off what was in there. <laughs> By the end of the night, multiplication table catches up with you, and it's not 5% anymore, it's 10 or 12%. <laughs> I guess the best way to explain how light that car was. Uh, the first two or three runs in the car, I didn't understand what was happening, but we would get to the end of the track and push off, and Don would play, jack the car up and put a jack stand just at the front motor mounts, under the frame on each side. One of the crew or two of the crew guys would jump on the front axle. I don't know why you're doing this, but this is a ritual. Maybe you did it once yeah. and you won, so it's superstition. Then I found out that when I'd pull a chute, when the engine would come, when the car would move, then the engine would drop, well, it would bend the frame. Oh so they would straighten the frame. <laughs> and then, you know, it, just three or four passes, you had to take the home, uh, the thing home and make straighten sure that the again. frame was <laughs> welded back together. But that was how light that car was. Wow. So I looked at the modern ra rat trap and it's got a lot stiffer to it's be. It's got a lot it. stiffer than it was. Yeah, and a few absolutely. uprights in it that we didn't have. Well, a lot of people drove the trap over the years. Oh, yeah. Danny Geiger, Danny Collins, you. Oh, I didn't even know you drove it until we were yeah. talking at SEMA that time, and George and a whole bunch of different people drove the well, car. It, uh, so it, it wasn't something that was just specific to yeah. me, but you know. Yeah, and this is the straight axle car with a leaf spring on the front. Now, who built the car? Don built the chassis and on the motor. He was a motor builder. He basically. was a motor was, builder, right. and I don't, I can't tell you who yeah. built the chassis itself. I'm guessing that Don had a big hand in it simply because with no money he was like everybody else. You right. know? Yeah. I'll build everything I possibly can. Now, I ran it at San Fernando, I believe I ran Orange County, I ran Tucson, uh, wow. Phoenix. I, I, we ran a pla the car huh. several places. Uh, probably the most memorable was running at Tucson because that was at night. Oh wow. And Tucson wasn't the longest track in the world and it was fascinating because Again, by the end of the night, 
the flames got greener ever run because of the hydrazine. And by the end of the night, I mean, it glowed almost neon green. That just made it more fun to drive. I bet, I bet. The car, like I said, once it was aimed and you got it stabilized, the car would go straight. Oh, uh, that's great. Your first eighth of a mile made up the difference of whether you were going to go straight or not. But I don't think I ever had to shut the car down early. Wow. It was just... I don't know, it was such a different ride than a top fuel car, right. a, a dragster, you know, because it just, uh, I don't know, it had its own mind. <laughs>